welcome back, my friends, to the off-grid garage. Nothing too traumatic today, just another little battery test here. And welcome to cloudy, cool Australia. We've had a nice winter day today. And I'll show you something. Look at this graph from today. Isn't that beautiful? And have a look at the one from yesterday. Yeah, looks very similar, right? But here, yesterday, 2.2 kilowatt hours, sunshine all day long, blue skies ever, total sunshine. Today we had clouds, 4.2 kilowatt hours, almost twice as much as yesterday. I love these cloudy winter days. They are good for my solar. And today with another viewer request from Sab... Sab... Sabon... Sabonidas. Hi Andy, please, can you do the same video but charging and discharging at 0.3 C and around 30 amps? Of course I can, Sabon... I have already prepared everything. I have discharged this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cell here to 2.9 volts. We have to go to 2.5 and then start fully charging it, have a look at the charge curve, and then we discharge it again at 30 amps. Okay, I'm just discharging the battery to 2.5 volts now, and then we get started. It's always very exciting if viewers request some charging and discharging tests here in the off-grid garage. You never know what to expect, and we can learn so much. And this will be a 0.3 C discharge test now, on charge test. So with 30 amps for a 100 amp hour cell. So we should expect the battery to be fully charged at about three, in about three, three and a half hours or so. Doesn't take too long then. Okay, we are now almost at 2.5 volts. The charger should turn off at any moment. Click, there it was. Okay, we have reached 2.5 volts and without any delay. Okay, I have now set all the parameters here. We're charging with 30 amps up to 3.65 volts and once the current drops to under 10 amps we stop the charging process. So we will start this right now. So the charge should take about three, three and a half hours I would expect at 30 amps for a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And then we can compare the 30 amp curve to the 20 amp curve and see actually what the differences are and how much capacity we have pushed into this cell at 30 amps in comparison to only 20 amps. I would expect 20 amps gives you a little bit more capacity because if you charge with higher currents, you're reaching the cutoff voltage earlier. You're just having a higher charge voltage. But um, let's see. Uh, I guess I shall see you again in about three hours. Yes, guys, we are back after exactly three and a half hours. We have now fully charged the cell. And here on the screen, we can now see again the charge curve of the lithium iron phosphate battery. This time we charged with 30 amps as requested. The curve looks very much the same as all the other curves we have seen before. So we started charging at 2.5 volts and we have a steep incline in voltage until we reach about 3.25 volts. And then we have another smaller incline here. Well, this is around at 30% state of charge, 30 ampere hours, and then it really plateaus out. There's not much increase in voltage anymore until we hit this knee here. And then we are already at 95%. And also once we hit the 3.65 volt here at the end, the current declined quickly and when it reached 10%, we finished the charging cycle. So what I'm doing now is I have opened the EB tester software again, and I want to compare our charge curve here with 30 amps to the one we did initially with 5 amps. This was the first charge and full discharge curve we did with a new CKE tech, what are they called? With a new CKE tech EB A20 with a smaller tester. And we should be able to open both curves now in one diagram. And I just have changed the colors here to match the second curve. Let's see if this works at all. It does. But why is it so white? Ah, okay. Because when we charged with 5 amps, it took obviously 22 hours. And charging with 30 amps took only 
three and a half hours. Bear with me. If we go on file and say open data, it gives us the option, the volt amp curve over time or the volt amp curve over milliampere hours. And I think this is the one we have to choose in this case, because the capacity of the battery stayed the same, but the time was quite different, of course. Okay, this is our first curve from just now, 30, uh, 30 amps. And you can see at the bottom now, we don't have the timeline anymore. We have the ampere hours here in this grid, up to 109.1 ampere hours. This was the maximum capacity we could charge in. Okay, so, and if I open now, voltage is green, current is yellow. So I changed the voltage to green and the current to yellow. This is for the 5 amp charge curve. Oh yes, I made it. Okay, so interesting are now the blue and the green line, which gives us our voltage. We can see how close they are together. So it doesn't really matter if we charge with 5 amps or with 30 amps, obviously. That is super interesting. Obviously, when we charge with 30 amps, we have a higher charge voltage. We are pushing more, we are pushing more current into the battery and hence the voltage is a bit higher. And that's why the blue line is a bit above the green line. So the, the more amps you push into a battery, the higher the voltage is, of course, the charge voltage. So that's why the blue line, the 30 amp line, is a bit above the green line. I wasn't expecting we are learning so much from this experiment. I thought this is far more boring, but it's not. It's super interesting. And here at the end, we can see the blue line is obviously increasing a lot faster than the green line. So just the voltage rises faster at the end if you charge with a higher current. All right, guys, I guess we are doing now the opposite. We are discharging the battery cell with 30 amps down to 2.5 volts. And then we will have a look at the discharge curve again. I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be exactly the opposite. The higher the current is while you're discharging, the lower the voltage is, of course. So our blue line should be now underneath the green line. That's my pretty obvious expectation now. Okay, I've now changed the parameters to discharge with constant current of 30 amps down to 2.5 volts. So this should take another three and a half hours. Well, guys, anyway, see you tomorrow morning and we have a look at the discharge curve then. You have a wonderful night. Guys, I haven't got any time this morning to do testing with this battery. I'm already late to work. The only thing I will do is I will just turn on the computer and the tester. I have now started the test discharging constant current 30 amps down to 2.5 volts. And, and the rest needs to be done. Hang on. The rest needs to be done remotely. I'm on my way to work now. If I started the test last night at about 9 p.m., it would have finished just shortly after midnight and the battery would have sit at 2.5 volts, very low state of charge for the whole night, for several hours. And I don't want to do this. I'm, I want to look after my batteries. So the idea is to start this morning and while I'm at work, I can remotely connect to this computer in the off-grid garage. I know the discharging should take about three and a half hours as well, same as the charging process. So at about morning tea time, we will remote into this computer and have a look at the curve and then recharge the battery just by about 20, 25%. And then we've got the full result and everything tonight when I come home and we can have a look at the graphs. Also, look at this miserable weather outside. We had rain all night long. So I don't think we are getting any solar input today. We've got now 10 o'clock. 
the charging process, the discharging process was finished at 9.30. So exactly th three and a half hours as predicted. Okay, uh, let me do a quick screen recording here on my mobile. So I'm just going to connect through my mobile phone to the computer at home. And here you can see the curve on the computer now. So three and a half hours exactly, the battery has bounced back to 2.999 volts now, which is quite amazing from 2.5, right? So it's not really sitting on a, on a low voltage now anymore, but still the state of charge is fairly low. So I'm going to recharge the battery now manually for about I don't know, 20% or something. So just give it a little bit of push so it doesn't sit at the bottom of the discharge curve all the time. Uh, we can see the typical discharge curve here starting from 3.65 volts and then going down quickly, tapering off, being constant until... We don't want to show you this here on the little screen of my mobile phone. We dig into this a little bit deeper. But then at 3, 3.1 volts, we're hitting the knee and it goes down quickly. Interesting is we have discharged with 106.65 ampere hours. So I will now save the graph again as the picture and the data. And then when I come home, we compare this to the 20 amp discharge curve we already have from this cell from right at the beginning. So I'm not going to change the parameters here to constant voltage charging, uh, cut off. Okay, start. There we go. It's so cool, I can remotely control this computer and the charger at home. I can also see the whole off-grid garage installation here on the Tesla screen. That is insane. Almost 600 watts, that's good. The weather has been getting better and better. More sun, a little bit of clouding, that's what I need. And we can see here the charger has now kicked in and recharged the battery. 115 watts it pulls from the inverter. All right, guys, see you back at home in the afternoon. And good after even... Definitely after evening. Welcome back to the off-grid garage. Okay, final results. Again, remember when we started this test, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? <laughs> Everything takes so long. And I'm making three videos at the same time now. I lost total overview of where I am. And this was exactly the point where I stuffed up. I forgot to turn on the screen recording. So I was recording everything, talking and talking and talking. And then when I started editing this video, I realized, well, there is no screen recording for this part. Well, that's no big deal. We just do it again. Hasn't been the first time. Okay, it is now recording. Nice. All right, welcome back. <laughs> Here are our two discharge curves for 30 amp discharging, the blue one, and 20 amp discharging, the green one. And respectively, it took only three and a half hours to discharge with 30 amps, but it took five and a half hours to discharge with 20 amps. And again, here at the beginning, we can see how close these curves are together. And quite a while, up until probably here, 50% state of charge, they are still very close together. And here they start drifting apart a bit at 65 ampere hours around they are going apart and discharging with a lower amperage, obviously the battery lasts longer. So here at the bottom left, we can see when we discharge the battery with 20 amps, we can get 110.65 ampere hours out of it. If we discharge with 30 amps, so 50% more, we get 106.65 ampere hours. So there's not much difference actually. Even you have a 50% higher discharge current. The overall capacity delivered by the cell is almost the same. That is quite remarkable and interesting, I think. I wasn't expecting that. I thought we are getting far less energy out of the battery if, if we discharge with a higher current. Apparently not. Okay guys, so far this test then from today 
And um, thanks to Za Zabu Z Zab Zabu Nida. Thanks for your request and comment. And I hope you can use these graphs and data now. As always, I will upload the graph and the data onto my website again. All the links are down below in the description. And then we shall see us again in one of the next videos coming out very soon from the off grid garage here in Australia. And until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.